All right, we are rolling. Greetings, dear Virgo, that's you. This is Tarot Illumination with your mini love and relationship kind of generic report, May 2018. So, because May is kind of a really pivotal month for the whole planet, I've kind of made a few extra little astro doodles for everybody, including you, Virgo. A couple of things before I get into it. You, dear Virgo, are an Earth sign by definition. So if you're watching this, please watch for your sun, moon, and rising. And if you have to, like, reinterpret the whole thing to suit you. But the thing is, there's huge shifts in energy happening this year, very slowly, incrementally, irreversibly. Uh, for now, the what's happening is we've got the big... Here, here's, I'll just get to straight to it, okay? Virgo, May 2018. Taurus energy, big deal, May 15th. There's the big Taurus new moon. And Uranus moves into Taurus pretty much on the same day. That's a huge deal, okay, for all Tauruses, for the whole planet. And it's very harmonious, supportive for you, dear Virgo, because of being an Earth sign. Okay, so that's happening for you up in your ninth house here of higher consciousness, okay? Uh, direct, uh, like, access to you know, like what I would call the heavenly vibes, so to speak, but in very tangible ways. I'm not talking about 12th house stuff here. Also, the thing is, we've got this, we've still got this big shift here in Capricorn. And this is a very long-term transit for you guys. And it's happening here in your fifth house of love and relationship. And love and romance, really. Relationships more over here, but it's more to do with... Uh, true love and romance and creativity and self-expression. So when you add the Taurus and the Capricorn energies together, it's very harmonious for you. Even though these are huge shifts, this is very deeply transformational with Pluto and Capricorn here, but it's very slow. It's very, very hard to detect it at the personal level. Okay, So it's still ongoing. So my feeling is that even though none of this is directly in your uh, love and you know romance part of your life except for the Pluto and Saturn it's but at least at least you're aware of this okay so please allow for serious reality checks in your love life okay romance and all of that stuff and because it's Pluto it's very hard to understand because it's going to be moving so slowly but it is deeply transformational also with Saturn there there's going to be a big crescendo around January 2020 somewhere in your love life. I'm just letting you know that right now, okay? All right? If you need to get into it, you can get to me directly at terraillumination.com and we'll figure it out, okay? For the time being, let's just play around with this little <clears throat> reading, okay? Sorry this took a really long time for the introduction, people. Uh, no jumpers, no flyers, no articles, no reversals. Sorry, I love the cards the way they were originally made. They're just beautiful as they are. And I know there's lots of other decks out there, but I stick to the basics. It's just like, you know, buying a hot dog when you're out and about or something like that. And you've and it's like last resort food, you know. Also, we're going to be using the crucible spread here on the understanding that years, there's you, dear Virgo. There's a significant other and a third entity itself called the relationship. Okay. And in a loving, healthy relationship, both parties invest in the relationship. I think of it as a crucible, where a crucible is a very, very strong structure, typically a, like a high refractory ceramic bowl that can withstand the intense pressures of relationships as we intimate and separate. You can also think of this as singles if you really, really want to. There's you, Virgo. There's a potential over here. If we take the laws of attraction, you are radiating, and this is what you would get back as an echo. Okay, so let's get into it. Cards are shuffled. All right, here we go. Oops, excuse me. <clears throat> so this is you uh, pulsing, radiating, love, romance, relationship dynamics, okay? Whatever they might be. Consciously or unconsciously, you're still radiating that stuff, okay? This would be the significant other. The chosen one that you have in your life 
for better or worse. This would be deep inside of you, deep inside of the other, and the core itself, the relationship. Okay, so you can see here the bowl shape. This is the crucible in which the relationship is conducted. This is the relationship, the third entity. And here is the momentum of the relationship. Okay, we're going to look at the weather, circumstantial energy in just a moment. And like everyone else, Virgo, we're asking you to uh, make the best of the weather, whatever it is, and not take it too personally. So you have the King of Wands. Now, my feeling is that this is a very strong but very, very subtle message from the universe to tell you, dear Virgo, you're doing a very, very good job one way or another, somehow or other, no matter how stressful things are for you, in other aspects of your life, including love and relationship, at the core level, you're doing a really, really good job of keeping your dignity, your self-respect, your honor uh, to yourself, loving yourself first, and then that's radiating out of you uh, as though you're living by example, almost like you're an inspiration to others and nobody can know and fully understand what you do or how you're doing it. It's just like, it's, it's just kind of an aura okay and it's being reflected back to you and my the other the other thing i feel obliged to say that is if if you're not feeling that way at all virgo then your circumstances and your environment are giving you hints some way somehow that it's time for you to conduct yourself and carry yourself in your full splendor no apologies no shame and literally be the inspiration to others this is the energy of like being the person that everyone wants to be around because they don't know why it's just like <laughs> you've got something okay so my feeling is that the universe is telling this to you and it's my feeling my primary feeling is that you're doing this anyway whether you know it or not so that's very good and i think it might be something to do with what we were talking about here this incremental shift into the very strong taurus capricorn energies which are very very supportive for you the person the individual Virgo, which happens to have an echo effect here on your love life. Isn't that handy? Let's have a look at you. What's going on? Okay. <laughs> well, this is very supportive too. With the Nine of Pentacles here, you might be getting a very soft, fuzzy, warm, uh, self-loving feeling like, wow, I must be doing something right. It's like, you might have all sorts of like technical challenges in the love life, the relationship, just like everyone else. We've always got issues. Everybody always has issues, things that are like a work in progress, stuff that has to be taken care of and worked on. But overall, it me, this tells me that you're doing a really good job of just being you, being very solid, independently you, being very, very, let's just say, minding your own business, taking care of your own business, and doing again in a circumstance that is very supportive for, for, for you to be like your best self and to enjoy who you are and what you have as a person and seeing that reflected back to you from your environment. I feel like going on a really extended reading here for you guys, but I can't do it because it's not fair to everybody else. But this looks really wholesome to me and really uh, inspiring. Now, whatever else is going on, okay? So I just wanted to get that out there because we don't pull all the cards spontaneously and then look at them and tell the story that way here at Terra Elimination. We, do, we go one step at a time. To me, it's an indication that you are enjoying literally the fruits of your labors. And this is very, very satisfying. This is not egotistic in any way. This is the sense of contentment deep inside like uh, like a life well lived. A job well done a person who has been conscientious and made good decisions and it just happens to have a ripple effect an echo effect into your love life let's have a look at the other more pentacles here with the page of pentacles you virgo might be relating with someone who gets it they understand you in some very clear evidential way in other words love is as love does i'm not talking about the esoteric stuff out there the potential romance and all the fairy tales and everything i'm talking about the nuts and bolts of a love life where you are being uh, let's say a really good version of yourself right now 
and it's evident and it's showing and you're getting that reflection that reciprocal energy back to you because it's so good it's like you there's this is the only outcome and it would be the energy of someone to me it feels like they understand you like i get you i totally get you i don't understand it all uh, i probably never will because you know i'm just living my life and trying to conduct my my own business my own business just like 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 just like you've been doing you've been doing and i intend to keep going this way in fact i would like to invest further and because this is good for me which seems to be good for you so it's like a mutually beneficial relationship type of energy that seems to be going on here but in a very nuts and bolts kind of way like well, I've done a really good job of being me, and I really appreciate you that you can see that in me and how you appreciate that too. And then they're coming along saying, well, I get it too, and I'd like to keep investing. So if you don't mind, let's keep it going. Let's build on this, you know, whatever we're doing. It's like a formula, and it's working, and it's evidential. Love is as love does. In other words, what can I do for you today, dear, to make our life better, to make your life better? Because... If that works for you, then it works for me. So please let me know how I can help you, how I can advance the relationship and make our relationship better. And you can kind of go, okay, well, you just asked the perfect question because I feel pretty good about things already, but now you've mentioned it, there's always work to do. So thank you very much in a very practical, Virgoic manner. Let's have a look here, deep down inside of you. Okay. Well, with the hermit here, it doesn't necessarily mean you're all solitary, miserable, and on your own. What I feel deep down is that what's happening inside of you is this really kind of profound soul journey that is becoming evident. In other words, you are enjoying the benefits of relationship where you can see how the structure of a relationship can provide a really, really nutritious uh, environment in which you alone Virgo can evolve and grow on your own spiritual journey and learn a lot about your own pathways unfolding for you uh, that can only occur that you can only learn and discover in the context of a relationship so you're gonna have those moments where there are you know challenges or even crushing challenges but the crucible is there to handle it okay so it doesn't mean just because you had a really rough day it's the end of your love life it just means you had a rough challenging day and then you took it upon yourself to figure it out they took it upon themselves to figure out and you figure out well what are we going to do how are we going to fix this and you discover that wow this is a formula uh, i can learn how to evolve and grow myself as an individual with in alignment with my loving partner over here because they get me and i get them so we are literally like nurturing and growing each other love is as love does and this becomes like a spiritual pathway a spiritual mission where you it's almost like your soul is realizing that you literally sort of create your own destiny decision by decision when you activate the healing power of love love the healing power of love in action in other words Love is as love does, where from my perspective as your reader, love is the willing decision to deliberately, if you have to extend yourself, go out of sight of your existing comfort zone to foster and nurture the spiritual healing and growth and happiness of yourself, first and foremost, and your most significant loved ones around you, okay? love is as love does you know it might not be fun maybe you have to stay up really late helping a child to do homework or maybe you have to really put up with a very angry spouse or mate or somebody who's had a really tough week but you have to figure out ways to deal with that that's love in action doing something that you perhaps don't want to do maybe you'd just rather sit home and somebody feed you grapes and champagne all day but that's not love that's more like indulgence okay so deep down inside of them okay well with the hierophant here to me it looks like they're willing to invest and go further and go further to the point where they'd like to get things kind of locked down and formalized where again in the context of this relationship since it looks like it's quite mutually supportive here uh in the day-to-day -day terms just literally 
like this, okay? Uh, literally, love is as love does, love in action. But at the soul level, it looks to me like they totally get it at the very foundations where this is starting to look like a formula, so much like a formula that you could itemize it in terms of a code, almost like a how-to book. Like from their soul level, it's looking like to them like, like, wow, wow, to me, this feels like we're doing it by the book, but doing it, doing it in such a way that actually works. In other words, to the point where you could actually, where they could actually write the book on this, like uh, what happens in a loving relationship? And here are some useful tips, almost like a how-to book. Like, first of all, treat each other with kindness, respect, uh, consideration, patience, listening very, very carefully. Uh, thoughtful awareness of the other's behaviors and the understanding of their weaknesses and their strengths and taking that into account when making decisions going further in line, further and further into the relationship without denying yourself the right to be you. So you would put all that down in terms of a code, like this is going to be the code of the relationship. That's how they want it. That's how they see it. And it looks very supportive between the both of you because you're benefiting in your own way, Virgo. They're benefiting in their own way. So it's uh, mutually, it's like a win-win situation here. That's kind of how it feels to me. No matter how challenging, like if this is a very tough card, let's have a look. Okay, well, healing. Gosh. Wow, you have a lot of arcana here uh, at the very core of your crucible. So to me, this is an indication that whether you, whether you know it or not, whether it's deliberate or not, you've ended up in a situation where no matter how challenging the relationship might be on the day-to-day -day level, you've got something very profound and solid at the level of the crucible and the level of the relationship itself, where the relationship itself is, is, is like the embodiment of what a really loving relationship could be or can be, or even is, because uh, like with Terra Illumination here, the, one of the big themes is the healing power of love, where love is almost synonymous with healing, because in a deeply loving relationship, a lot of healing occurs, where you become a healer to your significant other, and in re reciprocal energy, your significant other becomes a healer towards you. So the whole relationship becomes a very nutritious place for, for healing, because in, instead of looking at it as a relationship about how to exploit and get what you can out of each other, it's in, 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 instead it's about investing in each other in the way that one of the most effective investments that you can make in each other is the healing itself, so that you can evolve and grow and heal together, so you become your richer, more uh, fulfilled self, and they become the same way themselves in their own way. Completely different people, on a completely different journey, but in a shared environment, the crucible and the love and the relationship. And it's the healing because the healing is so, so important because that's how we grow because it's like, the, it's, it's like removing the obstacles from growth. Because if you come into a relationship and you're very sick and they're very sick and it just gets worse and worse, like an abusive relationship meets an abuser or you're a victim and they're an abuser uh, and things like that, where the relationship ends up as a really karmic, ugly kind of thing, where you have to learn the hard way that it's not healthy to be a victim, and you don't have to be a victim. You can be programmed to be a victim, and then you have to learn how to get out of that. It's very, very tough. But in this situation here, this looks like one of those kind of rare situations where it's harmonious, and it's mutually self-fulfilling and growing, uh, so that it's beneficial for both parties, very healing for both of you. The relationship, the crucible itself, is like a healing structure. Okay, let's have a look. Momentum over here. Well, with the Two of Swords, my feeling is that one of the, one of the, this is going to sound strange, but one of the, one of the most powerful tools like in, in in the whole process of healing is understanding like as we grow we make decisions and our evolution occurs through the process of decision making you can decide not to decide which is basically withholding all action in order to evaluate and live through a moment in time where you're not sure of anything and then 
wait till the right moment to take steps and make a healthy decision. So sometimes, like with the Two of Swords here, to me it feels like it's a realization that in the context of your relationship, it's very, very important to exercise this, like the craft of patience. In other words, anytime you reach, you, Virgo, reach a challenging moment with a significant other and decide that when you reach those kind of moments where the potential for healing can occur, you can deliberately pause and exercise the, the, the phenomenon of patience deliberately to say, okay, hi, my dear loved one, like, like, hello, my dear loved one. I can tell that we've had a bit of friction recently. What are we going to do about it? Should we take a break and try and figure out what it is? And they tell you like, well, I'm glad you brought it up because I was very reluctant to, I was scared. I could smell that something was wrong and out of whack somewhere, but I didn't know what to do. And then you can say, well, Let's be patient. Let's just pause for a minute. Let's take our time and then figure this out before we make any really tough decisions, okay? And they kind of go, okay, sure, that sounds like a good plan. And we're not avoiding this. We're just making very, very clear, like in a very Virgoan way, if you don't mind, because I'm a Virgo, that um, I am very, very picky about things working properly, and I want them to work properly, thank you very much. And if I sense that something is even slightly out of whack, we need to pay attention to that. And they're like, well, I'm, okay, I'm glad that you're onto that kind of stuff because I'm not you and I'm trusting you, okay? And you kind of go, okay, sure, well, let's make a plan. Oh, well, what's the plan? Well, first of all, let's pause. Let's take a break here and just um, sit down and figure out what the problem is and put it in words, okay? In a very Virgo and practical manner. Okay, all right. One tiny step, one tiny decision at a time, okay? Okay, I'm up for it. Okay, you start. What's the problem? Just get it out there. One little decision at a time, one thought, one conversation at a time. Okay? All right. Okay, I'll start then. Hold on. And then you kind of get into it and you work through it very, very patiently, one decision at a time, deliberately uh, pausing to take breaks anytime that something feels out of whack and then putting all the thoughts very, very clearly on the table. And that can be actually part of the formula for the healing process. In other words, conscious, deliberate healing, decision by decision, one tiny step at a time by open conversation and truthful dialogue between yourself and a loved one. Okay, Virgo? I see you as really quite lucky here. It's not going to be this uh, this sweet or this nice for everybody. I just to see that you're in kind of a good spot here. To me, you know, a lot of people are intimidated by this tiny little card here, but it's not. It's actually a very beautiful, powerful card uh, representing to me, your reader, the, the phenomenon of decision making, which is all about how uh, we activate our evolution by making decisions to do this or that, evaluating. Uh, being willing to see the middle ground and take your time and figure things out, okay? So I'll just put this on the side here. I'm just going to leave it. I'm not going to say anything more. You can reinterpret however you want. You've done this before. Watch for your sun, moon, and rising. And all the best, Virgo. See you again soon. Bye-bye.